Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today I have got everything ready. We are heading down to Gunnersville. We just finished up the Toyota series on Chickamauga and that's what we're going to be talking about. Didn't go as planned, obviously. Ended up fi finishing 89th. Uh, it just overall was not a good tournament for me, but it was a great learning opportunity and we're going to dive into that. But right now we've got um, the, the camper, the truck, the boat all cleaned up, uh, all organized. We got all our rods rigged uh, for Gunnersville, which is the next pro circuit event. And that's the, the, the most important one for me, you know, making sure that I, I dig myself out of the hole that I have, have dug for myself in points. Uh, on the pro circuit, on the first half, you know, we had a good Pickwick event, so we started to turn that around, and I really want a good event here at Gunnersville. So I wanted to make sure that I was all prepped, uh, and everything's nice and clean, man. It feels good to have, uh, you know, equipment that is ready to go. But uh, let's talk about uh, Chickamauga real quick. Um, you know, I haven't done that, that many videos on it, obviously. A lot of the problem is, you know, here at the, the property, we don't have internet yet. So, and our, our cell phone reception is really, really bad. So if I do a video, a lot of times it doesn't even get uploaded. Um, you know, I'll wake up the next morning and it's not even, you know, it's, it's not even, you know, a part, part of the way uploaded onto YouTube. So that's part of the reason why I, I haven't been doing as many videos. And unfortunately, uh, Chickamauga isn't going to have that many videos done about it. Number one, it wasn't very exciting. I didn't catch that many fish. Number two, uh, my GoPro wasn't working either day, uh, which was my fault the second day, especially because the first day I, I couldn't get it to work. Uh, the second day, uh, I forgot to switch, swap out that GoPro. So we didn't get any footage. We're not going to do any tournament breakdown of that. But I'm going to tell you about uh, the tournament right now. Um, you know, during practice, my whole idea was to uh, fish out deep, you know, fish offshore, because things had been kind of moving further along than, than normal. Uh, I felt like that more fish had spawned by this time of year um, than last year or previous years. And so I knew that I wanted to fish offshore, or at least try it for, for a good amount of the time during practice. And it didn't take long for me to go out there on the ledges and find out that I mean, there are a ton of fish already out on ledges on Lake Chickamauga, even though, you know, this week, last year, it was all about spawn. Um, there was hundreds of fish on some of the, the, the typical spots where mega schools show up, especially in May and June. And so that got me really excited. And I ended up stopping on, on just three spots the first day of practice uh, that, that, you know, our typical community holes, mega school areas and, uh, caught a seven and a half, a six and a half and a four and a half. Those were the only three fish that, that I, or schools that I sat down on. And those were the three fish that I caught within a couple casts. So I was like, man, this is where I want to be. I don't want to be shallow, uh, you know, giving up my, my local advantage, um, you know, just trying to, to, to catch the last remaining, a fish uh, of the last wave of spawners. And so uh, that's what I did. I, I spent 90% of my time out deep idling around trying to find schools and especially trying to find schools that were a little bit sneakier that people wouldn't find uh, because Lake Chickamauga is probably the biggest community hole uh, lake uh, on the TVA that I know of because there's, there's not that many spots that the fish get on. And uh, everybody knows about them, you know, by, by as far as how many tournaments we've had out here. I mean, it's it's not hard for people to find figure out where those spots are because boats are just loaded up there. And uh, so I was really worried that that, you know, I needed to find some some uh, sneaky stuff to be able to actually get on a guarantee that I get on something. Um, because the first day of the tournament, I was boat 234. And so I figured that you know, I wouldn't be able to get on, on anything that day. Um, and, uh, and so unfortunately I wasn't able to find any of those sneaky schools. So all I had was community holes. So going into the first day, I was really worried. Um, and, uh, and fortunately, I mean, at least I thought fortunately, uh, that first day I was actually, I was able to, uh, uh, go get on one of those schools, 
uh, one of those areas that had hundreds of fish on it. I mean, you could see on your Panoptics live scope that there was just hundreds of fish swimming around. And usually under those circumstances, there was no doubt in my mind I could catch a limit on that school. No doubt in my mind. Uh, but for some reason, and this, this ended up happening throughout the event, uh, I could not get a single fish to fire up. Didn't matter if I was throwing crankbaits, uh, hair jigs, uh, you know, drop shots, Ned rigs, football jigs, 10 inch worms, whatever you wanted to throw at those fish. And I tried everything that I knew, uh, you know, I, in a lot of, you know, different things that, that I, I got real creative at one point, I even threw a weight, a weightless wacky rig. And because there was no current moving, uh, the wacky rig, I could watch it on my pan optics and I actually put it right in front of the face of a bunch of fish and they wouldn't even touch it. So it was the craziest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a bite uh, so tough on the ledges to where I can't, you know, get something to, to bite. Usually, you know, when the, the bite is that tough and the, the fish, you know, don't want to, to chase down a bait, uh, you can get them to react with something like a crankbait that's just drug, drug right through their face and then they just kind of react to it. But that did not work. So spent like probably four hours doing that the first day. And then finally, you know, had to go up shallow and, uh, and ended up, you know, digging out a wacky rig rod and, and fishing a wacky rig up shallow, uh, for spawning fish and caught my limit pretty quick. It was a very, you know, small limit, obviously 10 and a quarter pounds. I ended up losing a, a, a fish in the five pound class the first day, which was a big bummer skipped it underneath a overhanging tree and thought I had actually hooked the a limb on the tree and when I was pulling back the fish just you know darts out and I couldn't catch up with it and uh and she ended up coming off which was unfortunately or unfortunate uh, and then, um, after that, I didn't have any other big fish opportunities. I lost like a two and a half pounder that would have helped. <clears throat> and then, you know, the next day, uh, it, it, everything kind of changed as far as weather. And so I was still holding on to hope that I could go fish offshore and, uh, I ended up, um, you know, the, they ended up pulling a little bit of current. They're only pulling like 7,000 CFS all week, which is super, super low, um, the lowest I've ever seen it consistently. And then we had some rainstorms, which we hadn't had any rain for like a week and a half. And, uh, and they ended up starting to pull another like 3000 CFS. So 10,000 total. So I was like, well, gosh, you know, if we've had a week and a half of just 7,000, pretty much dead, dead, no current moving, um, man, that, that little bit of, of current has got to help the bite. And we had a lot of storms moving through a lot of wind. And so first spot that I went to was that, that, uh, community hole ledge again, you know, had, and again, it had hundreds of fish. There's probably a thousand fish swimming on that spot and couldn't get a single one. Actually, no, I did catch one. I, 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 ended up uh, catching one on a crankbait that I feel like just swiped at it. And it was a pound and a half or <laughs> really, really weak. Usually when you catch one on that spot it is a giant, like three, three to eight pounds. Uh, I, I would, I would bet money usually that if you get a bite, it's going to be in that range. And uh, so I caught that little dink, but still yet again, could not get anything to fire. And uh, it just blew my mind. I was just, I, I couldn't believe how difficult or how impossible it was to get those fish to fire up. And I know some guys caught them offshore, um, but they also didn't catch them two days in a row offshore. Uh, it, to, I don't know anybody that caught them two days in a row offshore. Uh, the, really, they, they, you know, they may have pulled up on a school the first day or the second day that had, uh, you know, some fish that were already fired up for whatever reason. Maybe it was shad spawn, remnants of a shad spawn, and they caught some. But um, for the most part, offshore fishing just wasn't the deal because of the lack of current. And, uh, and so after, you know, sampling that spot, I finally was just like, gosh, threw my hands up. I'm like, I guess I got to go shallow again. So we went shallow because of the storms rolling through. We had some cloud cover. I picked up the uh, Z-Man um, uh, snakehead swim jig and uh, and just started covering water. I put the uh, the little turbo fatties 
uh, trailer on the back. I cut it down to size and put that on there and just started covering water. It felt, it felt right, you know, because it was hard for me to just slow down with a wacky rig. Um, and under the conditions, it just felt right for a swim jig. So I started throwing that around and within like 10 minutes of throwing the swim jig, I ended up connecting with a five or six pounder, uh, you know, right against the reed line and, uh, ended up again, losing that battle. Um, you know, set the hook, had them on for, for several seconds, kind of went into the grass, uh, didn't get tangled or anything. It just, it must've not got the bait very good cause it just ended up coming off. But I mean, it came up, saw its head, you know, it was a, it was a big, big fish. So, um, you know, I was hopeful at that point that, that I could overcome that and catch a lot more fish, you know, in that size class, you know, if that bite was on and it kind of tapered off, I caught pretty much my full limit. I may have weighed one on a wacky rig, but my full limit was, was mostly caught on a uh, swim jig. So I did catch them on a swim jig, but obviously you could tell by the weight that I had nine and a half pounds that they weren't very big. Um, so I never got another opportunity at a big fish. So the, the two big fish that I got to bite in the tournament, I didn't get them in the boat. So bad execution. Um, and overall just a kind of a, um, one of those events that I don't even know if I can be mad at myself for anything because I don't know what I would have done differently. I really don't. Maybe I would have just gone shallow and started fishing shallow more. Um, but, uh, it was just, it was so far beyond what I've ever experienced on chick as far as that offshore bite being just completely hundred percent dead. Um, that, uh, that it was a good lesson to learn because I honestly was a little bit, uh, overconfident going into the tournament, you know, saying, you know, I'm going to, I can catch them, you know, without current too. You know, I, I don't need the current to be able to, to catch a limit. I just might sit on a spot all day and catch five or six fish. And I, I'll still have, you know, close to 20 pounds at the end of the day. That's kind of like my, my thought process. But I thought I'd actually catch them pretty good because we had consistently low uh, current generation. So you would think that because it's consistent, they would have to bite at some point in the day, regardless of it of them pulling current or not. But it didn't seem to be the fact, or I was just on a bad rotation. Either way, um, I definitely learned a, a, a hard lesson at this event about um, you know not believing that I can I can force feed these fish. Sometimes they're just not going to bite, especially since this lake has seen tournament after tournament after tournament and and these fish have been so pressured i mean obviously you know if i was one of these fish and they don't look you know healthy either they're kind of you know skinny but that's that's typical of post spawn anyways but uh these fish have obviously seen a lot of baits they've been caught a lot of times and so uh yeah that paired with with low current it, it does make sense but I, it's just something that i needed to learn because if i'm going to gunnersville and i end up going and fishing offshore in this event um if they're not pulling current uh i'm not going to to waste my time with an offshore bite that's just never going to 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 come together so uh it was a good lesson to learn overall um, it really was a good lesson to relearn, but I, you know, again, I, I thought that I could still catch them without current. Um, the good news is even though I finished 89th in this event, um, I thought I was completely out of the points. You know, I was sitting in 24th in points and the top 25 go to the championship for the Toyota series in November on Gunnersville. And I thought for sure I was out of it, you know, with an 89th place finish, uh, right after an 88th place finish at Dale hollow. I thought that was that was pretty much it, uh, but I did the math, and the 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 you know yesterday, and uh, and uh, you know my math said that I was in at 24th, and turns out that I was. I ended up in 23rd. So I am going to make the championship, which is awesome because that's, you know, a part of the reason why I wanted to fish the Toyota series to begin with, other than the fact that I wanted to fish my home lake and hopefully win this one, which didn't happen. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that is the, the good news. We made the championship. We just barely squeaked in there and, uh, yeah, so I'm super happy about that. Even though, you know, we did have one top 10 at Gunnersville. The other two were pretty, pretty much a bummer. Um, but, uh, but 
you know, overall, I'm happy to to be able to go to that championship. I think that's going to be a pretty good tournament in November. It's always tough in November on Gunnersville, and I love tough tournaments. So uh, I think that one's going to be a blast. But anyways, that is the tournament. Um, now my eyes are towards Gunnersville. We got to focus on Gunnersville. We got to get this pro circuit, uh, you know, points race uh, moving in our direction. And, uh, and so that's what I'm going to be focused on from here on out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching all the comments, uh, you know, and, and all the support throughout this Toyota series. I'm sorry that I didn't get all the videos that, that I usually do on these tournaments. I promise the pro circuit, we're going to be doing full video coverage throughout the week. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. I'm going to see you down at Gunnersville and out on the water.